the most important factor that leads to you getting a good cookbook deal isn't the amount of fans that you have, it's not who you are as a blogger, and it's not your cookbook idea. It's how good of a cookbook proposal you write. There's a lot that goes into it, and Sally Eckes is here to step us through what we need to know. It's one of the reasons I put our clients and my authors in particular through sort of a hellacious book proposal process. And I mean that in the most fun way possible, because when you write a comprehensive book proposal, you will be offered a better book contract. That's just the way that it is. If you half-ass it, it's not going to happen. Hey there, I'm Jason Logston, and this is Making Bacon, all about helping you serve your fans, grow your income, and get the most out of your blog. Once you decide to write a traditionally published cookbook, you need to find someone to publish it. The first step in that is usually to find an agent. And to do that, you're going to need a cookbook proposal. There's a lot of different things that go into it, and you want to make a really good impression. In a recent podcast interview, I talked to Sally Eckes, who's a literary agent, and she's helped publish hundreds of different cookbooks. So she knows what goes into a good proposal, both from the agent side, but also what the publishers are looking for. She's going to step us through some of the different things you need to know to make sure your cookbook proposal really stands out. So a lot of bloggers, I think they understand coming up with a cookbook idea and they understand a cookbook on a shelf at Barnes and Noble. But the process in between those two, I think, is very murky to them. Without going into too much detail, what is the the actual steps to go from, I think this would be a neat book idea, to you know, available for sale at a bookstore? So if it's re- available for sale at a bookstore, you're most likely talking about traditional publishing. Generally speaking, if you go to the bookstore and you're looking at the cookbook shelf and you see a book, You can look at the spine and on the bottom of the spine of the book, there's usually the icon of a publisher. How you get on that shelf is typically with a nonfiction book proposal. And if the book proposal is this looming thing on your to-do list that you are dreading going back to time and time again, then I would say it's not the right time for you to write a book. Oftentimes I use the book proposal as a barometer for how successful or easeful will the book writing process be. It's one of the reasons I put our clients and my authors in particular through sort of a hellacious book proposal process. And I mean that in the most fun way possible um, because I'm really relentless about answering every question that could come up and doing so really specifically. Because when you write a comprehensive book proposal, you will be offered a better book contract. That's just the way that it is. If you half-ass it, it's not gonna happen. The process is, you know, taking your concept and working on the proposal components. So it's, of course, your idea, your point of differentiation, an analysis of the competition on the marketplace, your sample content, sample tested recipes, if it's a, if it's a cookbook per se, um, if it's more of a plan or a lifestyle, sample content from different chapters. You're working on promotion and marketing. Um, You know, there's a whole slew of sections in the proposal, and that's ultimately how you're going to then send it to either an agent or directly to an editor. Most of the big publishing houses don't take unsolicited proposals, meaning unrepresented. Some do, you can go on their websites and look. Most agents have their submission guidelines on their websites, so you can peruse around different agents' websites. And if you think you know or want to work with one specific agent, my personal recommendation is to submit a proposal to them exclusively with a time cap on their review process. So ultimately what you're saying is, hey, I've done my research, I have this idea, it's in a proposal, Will you take a look at it? You're my number one choice and you know I'm giving you four weeks to do so. Um, following up is a dance and a nuance of you know what's the line between how much and what's you know as you're sitting there waiting for that email to come back into your inbox, what's the line? You don't um, want them to forget about you, but you don't want right. to badger them right. either. And I, you know, in our agency, we answer every query that comes in unless it's a fiction query, simply because, we don't handle fiction. We're really clear about that on our website. And you know, if you submit fiction, you haven't really read our requirements. Um, but we answer everything. And it might take us two weeks. It might take us six weeks. But we, we do get back to you. We get great ideas pitched to us all the time. And for us, we also are looking for the right fit. 
So I love to set up calls with potential clients to see, you know, do we have the same goals in mind and are, is their working style going to match with our working style? Our agency tends to be highly communicative, really hands-on. And like I said, we put through, put people through a rigorous proposal process. And so if you think you're sending me a finished proposal, I'm not going to sign you because never once has a proposal come in and been ready to go out the door for pitching the next day. That said, they some have come really close and I obviously love those too. From when they give you a proposal, if you like it, how long does the, the back and forth between you and them and then the back yeah. and forth to editors tend That's to That's a great question. Um, it really depends. And I say this in every talk I do, Every my answer to everything in publishing is it depends. Because just a couple of weeks ago, a proposal came in and it was essentially perfect. I mean, there were a few things to button up and clarify. And so really it was done in a matter of weeks. More often than not, it's a matter of months, simply because you know, it takes time to rework a competition section or really dive into marketing and promotion. And those are the three sections that oftentimes need the most work because that's where the most detail matters for the best deal out there. And that's so important because you want to show to the editor and publisher how much basically upside there is, correct? Yeah, you want to show that you're really going to drive the sales bus because the more you're prepared to do as the author to promote your book, the better the book is going to perform. So it's not the time to say, you know, I'd be willing to go out on tour and do events to promote the book. It is the time to say, here's who I know, here's what I've done that's proven successful before in my community, both online and in real life. And here's how I'm going to leverage that in new and creative ways to promote and sell the book. I feel like that's really important because a lot of publish publishers these days don't do a lot of promotion on their own for the majority of books that they put out. So you're really, as the author left and the agent left to drive a lot of that publicity to try to drive sales. Yeah. And like I said, our, our agency was founded in PR. And so we're really encouraging our authors to think creatively about how they can promote the book. You know, landing on a national segment isn't going to drive sales dramatically necessarily, but that in conjunction with what you're going to do online, what your community is going to do online, who you know and can ask to promote it to a newsletter or an event, you know, all of that works together to ultimately drive the success of the book. Makes a lot of sense. Just trying to get out there and get out to people that have audiences that are similar to the audience that would be buying your book and that buys cookbooks in general. And I think for your audience and food bloggers who are thinking, you know, is a book right for me is now the right time and what can it offer? It's important to keep in mind that a book is not a retirement plan. It's a big, beautiful business card. And it can be really successful that way for opening up doors to other types of work. So it might take you to the next level in brand partnerships. It might help secure that local media spot that you've been trying to get onto. And, you know, the holiday is coming up, whatever holiday it might be, it's national, you know, burger month or it's Christmas. Who are they going to look to that has something new to offer and who's positioned as an expert to do a food segment? Okay, now you have something to pitch them. And so it's really about thinking creatively, how can this book leverage other opportunities that then all feed into one another. That's one thing that I harp on all the time is that you want to be a successful author. You need to figure out what your goal is and define what success looks like. Right. And a lot of people think, well, financial reward, and that can be a goal that you have, but like you're saying, you can also use it as a business card. Like it's marketing you or your brand. Right. Right. And it's positioning you as an expert. And I've heard you say, you know, it, it's helping with thought leadership and sharing an idea. And I fully support that. And I think that's absolutely true. And this is not to say that there aren't great advances out there. I mean, I'm always looking for the best deal. And to me, that's both equal parts financial and sort of cultural editorial fit, right? Who's going to pay you what you're worth and really get excited about what you have to say. And those are the deals I absolutely love to make. If you really want to do a cookbook, but you worry you're just not quite big enough, one option is doing a collaborative cookbook. It's an easy way to bring some other people on board that's really going to raise the level of your cookbook proposal. This video is going to step you through several of the options you have for how to put together a collaborative cookbook, things to keep in mind, and the best practices for reaching out to other authors. 
Until next time, I'm Jason Logston.